premier boxing champions on NBC being brought to you by Corona who invites you to find your beach and welcome back to Brooklyn coming up on premier boxing champions we're going to see the brothers Andre and Anthony Durrell in two of the next three cards my brother and I Anthony and Andre the two Durrells we look after each other every day my grandfather started me boxing as a kid with my brother <coughs> my grandfather had us running to school and then running back home and then hitting the gym kept us on the right track because he knew what was best for us I see big things coming for the two Durrells I am a champion I'm soon to be world champion when he gets this world title definitely be a double dream come true and super middleweight champion Anthony Durrell will fight in Chicago on April the 24th that'll be on spike CBS will televise the PBC event in Hidalgo Texas on May 9th and you'll see Andre Durrell in action in Boston on May 23rd on NBC well up next here the main event with Danny Garcia taking on Lamont Peterson Peterson learned very early on in life what it takes to be a fighter at age 10 with his father in prison and his mother unable to support her 12 children Lamont and his brother Anthony were in and out of foster care and homelessness but during that time Lamont discovered boxing and forged a bond that has helped make him a champion some nights we would just walk all night some nights you know we might ride on the bus for as long as we could car door was open might lay there for a few hours. Try to stay warm and get to the next day. <laughs> People don't know when Lamont learned how to fight protecting me. I was real short, real skinny, weak, slow, always sick. And a guy was hassling me one day, and Lamont caught him. And um, he beat him up. Definitely had a tough childhood. A lot of people, I don't think they quite understand me when I say it, but I'm happy all that happened. But it's made me the person that I am, and I'm happy with the person that I am. Lamont Peterson. Peterson climbed through the ranks of professional boxing thanks to his trainer of 20 years, Barry Hunter. <laughs> the partnership began while Lamont was still homeless. One day, he and Anthony visited Hunter's gym. And Hunter not only taught the boys how to box, but more importantly, provided stability in two lives full of uncertainty. The type of suffering that they were going through had shined a whole new light on from that point on, you know, we viewed them as, you know, our own kids. Through the rough times, I can always depend on him. Yeah, I call him my hero. And Lamont Peterson's family, including his 11 siblings, are here in Brooklyn tonight. Peterson told us yesterday he always knew that he would be here. Boxing was, in his words, his way out. He spoke with Kenny Rice earlier. He has said all week, including yesterday at the fighter meeting, I'm not worried about Danny Garcia. Lamont, why aren't you worried about him? Because I've been in this boxing game for 20 years. And, um, you know, you run across all type of styles, punches, big punches. And I've been in there with everybody. You know, at this point, I'm comfortable with where I'm at in my career. And I'm comfortable with getting in the ring with anyone. So I'm totally confident tonight I'm going to get the victory. As confident as you are, if you can map it out, how does this fight end for you tonight? It ends with a victory. Most of all, I can see me um, stopping them later on in the later round stuff. May not go the distance, you think? May, may not go the distance. Go ahead. If you got the prediction, we're ready. Uh, I say ninth, tenth round, maybe. Ninth or tenth round, I, I, I can see it happening. All right, Lamont Peterson. Now for more on both combatants, back to Marv Ray and BJ, guys. All right, thank you, Al. And uh, Ray, in uh, recent fights, Lamont Peterson has uh, been a guy getting off to very slow starts. Did Garcia go right at him? Well, for Garcia, Gar Garcia has to really be aggressive and has to take advantage of every opportunity. Um, the attack has to go to the body. A variation of punches and keep it busy, keep them guessing. That's the key here. You can't fight straight ahead. And on the flip side of that, Ray, Danny Garcia is a young, undefeated, and very hungry champion. He knows how to fight, what he does very well. He mixes up and down his offensive attack. He's got that devastating left hook that he sets up very nicely with the right hand of the body. He knows how to land that punch. He comes back every time with the left hook. Good stuff from a very strong and confident champion. 
All right, moments ago, Kenny Rice with Danny Garcia. Yesterday at the weigh-in, Danny, you told Lamont Peterson, this is your house. Yes, sir. You're a Philadelphia guy. What makes Brooklyn your house? Oh, this is this is my territory right now. Uh, you know, all the fans are coming out to see Danny Garcia tonight. It's my fourth fight at the Barclays Center. And I just had to remind him he's coming into the Lions' den. People have been wanting to see this fight. What makes the style matchup between you and Peterson so interesting for you and the fans, you think? You know, it's a fight the fans wanted. And, you know, I'm all for the fans, so we had to make this fight happen. And I'm going to go in there and get the job done tonight. Does the job include finishing the fight, or will this go the distance? I'm always looking for the knockout. Anybody who knows Danny Garcia, um, I'm always looking for the knockout. But if the knockout don't come, then I'm ready for 12 rounds. Who first, who first? Thank you. Thank you. Moments away from Danny Garcia and Lamont Peterson. Peterson, 31 years old, out of Washington, D.C., Danny Swift Garcia, the 27 year old from North Philadelphia. It's coming up. Danny Garcia. Ramon Peterson. My fight with Danny Garcia is the biggest fight of my career. Of course, Danny Garcia is undefeated, and he's a champion. But I'm ready to step on the throne and, and take over. Lamont Peterson, he's a good fighter, but I'm a great fighter. This is it. There's no turning back. It's time to go in there and handle business. I'm going to bring fireworks, and I'm going to fight my heart out like I do every time. Now set to make his way to the ring, Lamont Havak Peterson. Twenty-one years ago, Peterson was homeless, but around that same time, he met his trainer, Barry Hunter, who supported Lamont and his brother Anthony, also a boxer. And Hunter told us yesterday that when he became a trainer 34 years ago, he never meant to stay in boxing this long, but after helping fighters like Peterson, he can't walk away. And here's his man, Lamont, into the ring. Now making his way to the ring, Danny Swift Garcia. Garcia has been trained by his father, walking behind him off his right shoulder. Angel, since he began boxing at age 10, but when Danny was 16, Angel was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. Danny put his training on hold, and Angel has now been in remission for seven years, and Angel told us yesterday, when it comes to fighting, he is the coach, not the dad. Danny Garcia right there. And a look now at the tail of the tape, presented by Corona. Peterson at 31, Garcia 27. You look at the weights, 142 and a quarter, 143. That was yesterday. Then they were weighed unofficially tonight with their clothes on. And Lamont Peterson has picked up 22 pounds, including the clothes. And almost a 15-pound pickup by Danny Garcia as they get ready to go 12 rounds. And again, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref or the doctor can stop the fight. Can't be saved by the bell. Fight will be official after four rounds against Steve Smoker standing by in case of any controversy. And now back again to the arena announcer, Michael C. Williams. Live from Brooklyn, Premier Boxing Champions now presents tonight's second main event. 12 rounds of action at a catch weight of 143 pounds. The judges at ringside, Don Ackerman, Kevin Morgan, and Steve Weisfeld. 
your referee in charge of the action is Harvey Dock. And now, first, introducing the red corner. He wears the white, white trunks with purple. Impressive as a professional. 33 wins, 12, pardon me, two losses with one draw. 17 wins by knockout from Washington, D.C. Introducing Lamar Havik Peterson. And his opponent tonight fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the giraffe colored trunks with tan and black trim. He's undefeated as a professional. 29 wins, no losses, 17 victories by way of knockout from Philadelphia, PA. Introducing Danny Swift Garcia. Okay, guys, we went over the instructions earlier. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. No question the crowd favorite, Danny Garcia, out of Philadelphia. His family is from Puerto Rico. And Philadelphia, of course, a city that has produced many, many Excellent fighters, the likes of Joe Frazier, Bernard Hopkins, Benny Briscoe, Matthew Saad Muhammad, and Ray, of course, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yes. Danny Garcia with that dangerous left hook. Lamont Peterson, as we touched on earlier, has started slowly in recent fights. In his last bout last August, won by TKO in round 10 against Edgar Santana. And that was here in Brooklyn. Garcia's last fight, second round knockout of Rod Salkin. Uh, dating back to April of uh, 2011. He's faced as, as high a level of opponent as just about any other fighter in all of boxing. Has not ducked opponents, but he was criticized for... Uh, taking on the much smaller Rod Salka. <laughs> Garcia with a number of impressive wins, twice over four division champ Eric Morales, plus victories against Amir Khan, Zach Judah, Nate Campbell, Kendall Holt, and the unanimous decision over Lucas Atise. This is after the Matisse knockout of Lamont Peterson. You notice that Lamont Peterson is just moving around the ring. He's in ring generalship. Just trying to feel his man out. Just trying to see the power of Garcia. Just trying to understand, see what works and what doesn't. Try to, try to you see Lamont guy is doing some really good work in this first round here. He's very conscious of the Garcia left hook. He shot a lead right hand earlier. We've done it. Took a good right hand there, though. And uh, using his jab in this first round. Correction, the fight between Garcia and Salka was a bit more recent. It was last August. Garcia looked at a kind of a warm-up flurry by Garcia. You notice that left hook to the body from uh, Garcia was powerful. It was real sharp. I mean, that, that left hook is, is it's so much power because he's able to maintain his balance. His poise, very composed, very good fighter in Garcia. 29 0, 17 by KO, although three of his last four fights have gone the distance. Peterson, 33 2 and 1, 17 by knockout. And three of his last four fights have not gone the distance, including that knockout loss to Matisse in three rounds. Like Peterson knocked down three times in that bout. <laughs> so that's it for round one. Easy, easy. The only trainer Danny Garcia has ever had is Dad Angel. And here's a look inside their special relationship. Listen, move your head. My father had a relationship. 
You know, we have a friendship. He's my trainer. It's not about him, it's about you. Champ of the world. A lot of times it don't work because fathers put too much pressure on the fighter and don't let them be a regular person. He's always full of energy, playing around. Sometimes I feel like I'm the father and I gotta tell him, chill out. <laughs> here, you gotta give me air, here. Okay, Dan? All right? Don't forget, okay? Nice and easy. Move okay, your head, move your, use your leg, don't jump up. Okay. Stand your ground a little bit, okay? Don't jump out, all right? Deep breath, deep breath. All right? Hey, keep, keep your eyes on They have head. noticed blood on the nose. Look to be a minor cut on Danny Garcia. We had an action-packed earlier fight. With Andy Lee put down in rounds one and three by Peter Quillen, who went down for the first time in his professional career, round seven. And it was an unusual split draw. And and Ray, both fighters handled it well afterwards. It was, you know, there was no question in their minds. Because they have that heart, that, that intestinal fortitude, determination. Those qualities you can't, you can't make happen. It's natural. Look at here, Lamont Peterson. He's doing the right thing. He's boxing, staying on the outside, trying to frustrate Garcia. Al touched on the background of Lamont. Peterson, which is pretty extraordinary. He's come a long way at the age of 10, homeless, uh, without parents. Father was in prison. His mother abandoned him. He and his brother living in two shelters, taken under the wing of trainer Barry Hunter, as was his brother Anthony, and led to successful amateur careers for both Lamont and Anthony for Lamont, a National Golden Gloves Championship back in 2001. And on to the professional ranks where he has done well. The movement of Lamont Peterson is, is great. And what he's, he's really frustrating uh, Garcia at this point here. He just cannot be a stationary target. And what Garcia needs to do and wants to do is get him against the ropes or in a corner. And you see so far the first two rounds, Lamont Peterson couldn't ask for anything better. He's came out, he showed his amateur background. He could fight both styles, either coming forward or boxing. Today he's choosing to box and he's having some uh, some success against Danny Garcia. As we mentioned, Peterson has had a history of, of slow starts. Does not seem to be the case here in the first couple of rounds. Well, he can't afford to have a slow round here against a puncher like Garcia. He needs to stay on the outside, use that hand speed, uses like that, that, that background of, of great amateur uh, fights. Stay on the outside. Garcia noted for that left hook. Haven't seen it yet. Went to the right hand. Peterson just picking away here. So Lamont Peterson going to the jab as this second round comes to a close. So far through the first two rounds, we're seeing some real nice boxing ability from Lamont Peterson. You see him landing a nice counter right hand on Danny Garcia. But Danny Garcia is coming forward. The bloody nose of Garcia started right there. A little bit later in round two, more good defensive skills, showing that amateur background. Beautiful right hand to the chest of Danny Garcia. He's making contact with him and letting him know he's in this fight. Back up, back up. There we go. On to round three, and Ray, this fight kind of a, a throwback to the old days. World title holders would need an over the weight bounce on a regular basis. They'll pick up a little extra money, stay busy without having to uh, struggle to make weight. In this case, uh, both fighters are title holders. We heard Al Michaels earlier point out that they were weighed today in their street clothes. And Lamont Peterson was 22 pounds over his normal weight. Is he carrying a heavy wallet no, in these, his pocket? The, it tells you these little guys are big guys in, in reality. But um, again, looking at Peterson, he's really doing a great job moving, not being a stationary target, 
really frustrating Garcia. Garcia can't get, he can't get uh, planted. He's reaching for his punch. You see that, looping right hand. And that's because of the movement from Peterson. A chance off for Danny Garcia. And Puerto Rican descent. His family still living in Puerto Rico. But makes his home in North Philadelphia. Peterson's really using that jab, keeping his man off balance. And what he does, he just sticks it out there and he blind he blinds he blinds Garcia with the glove. He's yeah, not Ray, power. I'm sorry. Yeah, Ray, a lot of good stuff from Lamont Peterson, and he alluded to Danny Garcia reaching a little bit with his punches. That's because of the lack of jab and the good movement and jab from Lamont Peterson. So if Danny can get that punch going to the chest or to the body, he'll start to have more success against Peterson to stationize his target. He's noticed that Garcia came in and he was ready to punch, but Peterson wasn't there. That's very good boxing. That's what he, that's what you call ring generalship. Utilizing the ring, utilizing your speed and movement. Peterson continues successful in staying away from Garcia. Final seconds, round three. It's the premier boxing champions on NBC from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Back in a moment. I'm Deontay Wilder. When I step inside the ring, I'm a bronze bomber, ready to take off the next man head, ready to seek, kill, and destroy. I have a perfect record of 33 and 0, 32 knockouts. I'm Deontay Wilder, the heavyweight champion of the world. You can open up a little more, but be cautious, all right? Okay. I like a counter right hand over top of that jab, but keep yourself in position where you can get it. Don't pull straight back and turn around. Don't let it rock. Barry Hunter in the in the corner, Lamont Peterson, with a little Q and A, questions and answers. He, I, I haven't seen that too often. Where you see a trainer ask his boxer, "What do you think? What are you doing right? What are you doing wrong?" <laughs> well, Barry Hunter is a very good trainer, and, uh, well respected. He knows his, the fundamentals, and you can see that Peterson is well schooled. And as you saw on uh, uh, Steve Farhood. Scorecard. He had the first three rounds, all 10-9 for Danny Garcia. Which fighter do you feel should be the aggressor? Well, Danny has to be the aggressor, being the shorter of the two. But he also has to utilize his jab a little bit more to get inside. It's just the hand speed of Peterson and the movement, the lateral movement of Peterson that's really driving him crazy. This is what frustrates fighters, especially when they, when they can't land a shot. And in the corner of Peterson in the last round, they told him, okay, you thought the first three rounds very intelligent. Let's start bringing the right hand off the top of the Danny Garcia jab, but don't stand straight up whenever you're done. Get underneath the hook. Look like Peterson slipped. No knockdown. No knockdown. In your gloves. It is not a knockdown. No knockdown. No knockdown. Let's go. Juan Peterson affected at using the entire ring. Oh, the movement of Peterson is beautiful. And he was able to drop a right hand after throwing the left jab. All good movement. 
lateral movement. What? Getting a little confident. Extremely. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd. And they're not happy with the lack of action in comparison to the uh, previous fight. It saw a total of three knockdowns. Fight between Lee and Quillen, which ended up in a split draw. And they'll hear it from the crowd again. And we talked about it in the pre-fight game plan. Lamont Peterson has to be careful early. He's boxing very nicely, lands a nice right hand, left hook, backs up a little too much, falls out of the ring there, not a knockdown. But, you know, good work from Lamont Peterson in that last round, guys. And uh, I'd like to see him pick it up a little more in this round, but so far very effective through the first four rounds. BJ, the biggest career moment for Lamont Peterson was bittersweet. Back in December, Four years ago, he won the 140-pound junior welterweight title by decision over Amir Khan, but then was stripped of the title when it was revealed that Peterson had used testosterone. He comes in at 32 wins, two defeats, one draw, 17 of the wins by knockout. Right hand by Garcia. Did no damage, but it did get in. Barry Hunter, the trainer of uh, Lamont Peterson, just yelled out uh, this round, uh, frustration. That's what they want to do against Garcia, frustrating. Right hand and a left, good combination by Peterson. I love the concentration of Peterson. Know exactly what to anticipate from Garcia. And he'll move out of the corner. Take him back to the center of the ring. Hands up. I think Garcia should start going to the body. Slow his man down. According to our unofficial score, Steve Farhead, he had a 10-9 round for for Peterson in, in round four, the previous three rounds, this unofficial, going to Garcia. But it has not been action-packed to this point. Well, again, Garcia should go to the body. The body can't move. The head can move. Garcia doubling up on the left and then coming in with the right hand. Hear the anxiety in the crowd after what they saw in the earlier bout. Oh, right hand got in this time. Did not do much damage. Garcia able to land, but it wasn't flush. Off. Andre Durrell takes on James DeGale. Premier Boxing Champions, Saturday afternoon, May 23rd on NBC. In the first fight tonight, something you don't usually see, a split decision draw between Peter Quillen and Andy Lee. And let's go back to the third round of that fight where there's a bit of a controversy. In that, Quillen knocked Lee down. Two of the judges scored it 10-8, 10-8, because they usually follow what the referee calls it. That was a knockdown, it's usually 10-8. But a veteran, Glenn Feldman, who has been around a long time, one of the judges scored it 10-9 in favor of Quillen. That one point obviously turned out to be big, the difference between the split decision draw and a Quillen victory. 
but I spoke a moment ago with David Berlin. He is the executive director of the New York State Athletic Commission. He tells me it is not written in stone that it is the judge's prerogative if they feel a fighter is getting back into the fight that it doesn't have to be a 10-8 round even if he was knocked down. Obviously, the judge felt that Lee got back into the fight enough in that third round to make it 10-9, and therefore a split decision draw, gentlemen. All right, Marv? thank you. Thank you, Kenny. When Peter Quillen and his people look back at the bout, they will not be happy, <laughs> despite that explanation. Once again, Garcia tries to double up with the left. You see the body shots thrown by Garcia. That's, that's where he should go. And I mentioned the fact that Peterson punches are very accurate and precise. Maybe not as hard as Garcia, but sharp. Very direct. Combination by Garcia able to land. And you see in the sixth round, guys, the pace of this fight really starting to change. Danny Garcia digging those body shots in, like Ray had mentioned earlier, what he needs to do. Lamont Peterson is starting to stand in front of Garcia more. Let's see what happens in the next few rounds. Ray did want to make a correction earlier. I said that Peterson was stripped of his title. He was stripped of one, but he kept another in the world of alphabet titles, so he is still officially a title holder. That movement from Peterson is not allowing Garcia to get his balance, to really get his timing down. Peterson effectively using the jab and a right hand. And again, those punches by Peterson may not hurt Garcia, but they're frustrating him. He's so close yet so far. You see something, I know. But you got to go behind the jab. Don't take no crazy chances. It's not necessary. Here's where you separate the boys from the men's. When this guy's taking deep breaths like that, you got to take your last breath and say, I'm going to give it to you now, brother. You heard me? Let's breathe. Throw your breathing. Let's go. Three. And you're throwing a lot more Three. punches. Three. Hey, he's going to stand up. Lamont Peterson continues to stand in this corner between rounds. This is round number seven. <laughs> Lamont Peterson in the purple trunks out of Washington, D.C. Andy Garcia in what he calls the giraffe print trunks. And his dad is with Kenny Rice. Thanks, Marv. Angel, what are you yeah. seeing in your son right well, now? I see Danny trying to be the, he's the aggressor. Peter St. just running around. I keep telling him, touch him down. Stay only going to run so much that he get caught. Is this the way you thought this fight with those styles coming in would go? He's going to try to run, but he's not a boxer. Kenny run for 12, you don't win running. You got to stand in, you got to point. Like, you got you to you land shot. He ain't landing nothing but running. This, that's, that's not what we want. We wanted to fight. Stop, stop, he's getting stop. good right now. Look, he's getting tired already. Look, he just ain't going away no more. It's a matter of time. The longer the fight goes, any concerns stop. about that? Do you want your son to end this quicker? No, no. It, it, I mean, it goes 12, it goes 12. It ends earlier, it ends earlier. But that's the plan. We train for 12 rounds. All right, thank you. Mark. All right, Kenny. And earlier, in a conversation that uh, Kenny Rice had with Lamont Peterson, Peterson said this will be over 
in nine or ten rounds. <laughs> this is round seven, just past the halfway mark. Ray, I do have a fact of the night for you. <laughs> Danny Garcia, as it turns out, has six toes on his right foot. And he believes that the, the extra appendage, let's say, is an advantage. Said the toe is the reason that he's never been off balance and he's never been down. And he's able to land with a nice combination right there. Oh, right hand by Peterson. And great body shots by Garcia. Through a number of those shots. That'll do it for round seven. I'm Andre Durrell. I'm from Flint, Michigan, where I come from a family of boxers. In 2004, I received the bronze medal in the Olympic Games. In 24 professional fights, I have 23 wins with 16 knockouts. I'm Andre Durrell. This Wednesday, April 15th, marks the 30th anniversary of the legendary Hagler Hearns fight from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It was billed as the fight. It turned out to be the war. On that night in Las Vegas, there was no strategy. The two guys just met in the center of the ring and tried to kill each other. It lasted eight minutes. Stopped at 201 of the third round. It's been referred to as both eight minutes of fury and eight minutes of hell. I was breathless that night. Ray, you were there as well, calling the fight for HBO. What yes, do you remember about it? Well, I contemplated coming back at that time when I saw that fight in those three rounds. I said, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so you were actually considering retirement. We come in, no, coming back. Right. And I, saw I, mean, that, I mean, coming back. And those three rounds. Right. I right. saw those three yeah. rounds, and I said, I'm okay. Yeah. Round eight, scheduled for 12. You notice now that uh, Peterson is being aggressive. Body shots, look at those shots to the body. He's trying to walk his man down. Reversal of the road. And he's flat footed, which means power. When the fighter is flat footed, that's all power. That's how you generate power. Our unofficial scorecard has it 69 64 in favor of Garcia. And you see this pace this fight changing a bit, Marv. And Danny Garcia's fights with Zab Jude and also Mauricio Herrera, he faded a little bit down the stretch. Team Peterson knows that, and they're trying to pick up the pace here in these last few rounds. Look at those shots to the body. By Peterson. Keep him up, keep him up, Danny, keep him up. It is really picked up here in the eighth. by Peterson. Garcia right back. He's flat. Peterson is flat for it because he's generating power here. Watch the shots to the body. He digs. Talks. Speed. He, he is pursuing Garcia. Big round for Lamont Peterson. And like I said, he learned this all from Barry Hunter, a, a great trainer. Fundamentals here.
There appears to be a little blood coming from uh, the white eye of Garcia. Peterson continuing to land, looking very confident now. He's been setting it up with a jab. Premier Boxing Champions on NBC is brought to you by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. Lamont Peterson anxious to come out of his corner, particularly after his performance in round eight. Once again to the jab. And he's been landing on Garcia. You can see the mouse under each eye. You can really see the conditioning of Peterson. I mean, he told us yesterday he didn't even take time to go to the barber to cut his, to trim his beard. I mean, he he is really being an athlete here. More than a boxer, he's an athlete here. Mark Peterson made his professional debut September of 2004 at the age of 20. Won his first 27 fights. once again showing his confidence Is that a bolo punch attempt here <laughs> that wasn't my bolo punch. <laughs> but it worked is working i tell you that he really wants to frustrate Frank peterson out here he's talking talking trash to garcia Garcia, it appeared, on the edge of the early rounds, but Peterson has really come on. Oh, right hand by Garcia. But he, he went with it, but the conditioning of Peterson is, is, is truly uh, uh, amazing. Right hand again. Garcia able to land. Fire. Block and then nice combination to the body by Garcia. And Peterson, again, his concentration. Look at him. Walking this man down. Trying to cut the ring off. Step to the side, getting angles. Hard shot by Peterson to the midsection of Garcia. Turning southpaw. Turning southpaw now. With his lead with his right. Lamont Peterson lands a right at the bell. I'm saying this rhythm with the jab. Nice and easy, Campeon. Exactly. Nice and easy. When he's coming at okay. you, you stick a jab right in it. Step it side to side, jack in the box. Go put it right up, right hook. No, set on it. See some real good work from Lamont Peterson here in the last round. He's really flipped the script on Danny Garcia, retreating in the beginning, and now got the champion with his back against the ropes, landing his nice jabs the body, overhand rights, and really got the champion's, champion's attention in that last round, guys. All right, PJ, it is on to round 10. Garcia had the early rounds. Peterson has come on and has continued to show confidence, showing different angles to Garcia. Oh, would you describe this one? I, I think that's one of the kind. I think that's a Peterson move. But he's so composed, so relaxed. Peterson is just 
having fun here. On the unofficial scorecard of boxing historian Steve Farhood, Steve has it 88-83 for Garcia by virtue of the first three rounds and then rounds five, six, and seven. Now let's uh, check in with Kenny Rice. Kenny. All right, thanks, Mark Peterson Corner. Barry, you feeling good about this fight? I am, but you never know this boxer. You gotta keep boxing, sweet signs. Did I see correctly, you two rounds ago after Lamont came back to the corner, you said this fight's over? That's it. What it is, Danny gotta have a target in front of him. We're not gonna give him that. We're gonna be smart. What'd you tell him between rounds? He can hunt him down now. Control anger. Behind the jab, walk him down, put him on his heels. He can do nothing. All right, thank you, Marv. All right, uh, Kenny Ray, uh, entertainment value or strictly taunting to bother your opponent? Taunting capital T. Yeah. Particularly if the judges agree with Steve Farhood, Peterson is behind on the scorecard, although he has certainly picked it up the last few rounds. We have not seen much of it. Right hand just off the mark. Crowd not appreciating the antics of Lamont. That's your composure right there. You got your composure right there. That's your composure right there. That's your fight right there. You just keep That's breathing. Let's breathe. Doing, baby. Let's breathe. Listen. The rest of this fight being brought to you with no commercial interruptions by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. Yeah. Let's finish it. Keep your hands up, man. Right. Look. 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 Don't fall asleep in there. Don't fall asleep. You feel me? Hunt him down. Stop ripping shots, man. Stop ripping shots. A man that's stronger than you. Hold the ball. Stop with him. Keep him off the set. Watch. He jumps around. He jumps around and he beats in. To demonstrate the kind of shape he's in, he has been standing between rounds right from the start. Lovato. And he shows that he's right, he shows that he's in tremendous shape. And you see the Steve Farhood unofficial scorecard. He has it 97-93 for Garcia. Peterson winning the last round, according to Steve. Although in the corner of Lamont Peterson, Barry Hunter feels that his fighter is in front. Combination by Garcia. And a good shot to the body, and again, Danny Garcia taking a hit from the Peterson. Body shot by Lamont Peterson. And look at Lamont Peterson as he walks his man down. Very impressive, especially with the shots that he's throwing. Keeping those hands high. That's a push. Garcia caught. Peterson off balance. Don't push him. Don't push him. Let's 
those shots that got sealed through, those are the kind of shots. Because if you throw one shot, chances are you're not going to do much damage. Get a warning this time. Harvey Dock, the referee. Tells Peterson he pushed. Good right hand by Garcia. And a combo. Final minute. Round 11. Low blow from Garcia. These are hard shots being exchanged. Good hand got in from Peterson. Good shots for both fighters. And the combination as a follow-up. Again, it's Peterson. Measuring. Yes, and look at the face of Danny Garcia. You know he's been in a fight. Good round, 11. Tonight, Premier Boxing Champions coverage continues. BCSN at 11. Big bounce. Log out to find the channel in your area. Hold the phone. Dump on him the whole time. Hey, hey, baby. Look at me. Look at me. I never left. See in the last round a little bit of frustration by Danny Garcia. Lamont Peterson standing a little too straight up. Danny Garcia trying to get a separation, a little space, because Lamont was smothering him. A little flat-footed there and pushed him straight back. Lamont goes down. No knockdown. So for the second time tonight, we go to a 12th and final round. And the earlier fight between Lee and Quillen, it was a, a split draw. All right, let's go. This is going to be a tough one to score. Steve Farhead has it 106-103 for Garcia. Peterson has been the aggressor for the last portion of this fight. Peterson. And the left, followed by the combination. Look at the shots, the body shot. I mean, really digging deep. Peterson with all some incredible body shots. He tried to load up on a right. Peterson is flat-footed, looking for the knockout punch. Fighters come down off their toes to gain power. Peterson is quite candid. He says he's not a real big puncher, but he's a hard puncher. He is a hard puncher. That he is, and consistent, and accurate. That's what he said to us yesterday. He will hurt his opponent. That's a low blow by Garcia, but he's not a power punching machine, as he refers to some other fighters in his division. Right hand by Peterson. Coming up on a minute remaining in this 12th and final round. They continue to exchange as a left by Peterson. This is what I call closing the show. When you become aggressive, especially when the fight's this close. Peterson's walking, walking his man down, staying inside for a big shot. They're on their feet here at Barclays as we come up on 30 seconds remaining. Strong finish by Lamont Peterson. But will be a tough one to score. 
20 seconds to go. It's been all Peterson in the final round. Final seconds. And an ovation from this Barclays Center crowd. Back with the decision in a moment. Right hand and a left. Good combination by Peterson. He's able to land with a nice combination right there. Lamont Peterson lands a right. This a tough fight to score. Steve Farhead has it 115-113 in favor of Garcia, who was very impressive early rounds. And then the crowd was booing for lack of action. And then Peterson came on, came on strong. Apparently, they're rechecking the scores. Verifying. Lamont Peterson, very impressive in the last three, four rounds. And if you look at faces, it appears that Danny Garcia got beaten up. And uh, Lamont looks like he could go again tomorrow. Lamont looks fresh. Keep going all day, man. All right, we're set for the decision. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone 12 full rounds of action, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, ringside Don Ackerman, scores the fight 114 to 114. He sees it even. That score overruled, however, by judges Kevin Morgan and Steve Weisfeld, who both scored the fight the same at 115 to 113 for the winner by majority decision, Danny Swift Garcia. Congratulations, Danny. Tough fight. What did you say just a moment ago? It seemed like the tone had changed a lot since the weigh-in yesterday. Were you talking to Lamont here after this fight? No, I said, um, good fight. Good fight, Lamont. Um, first of all, I want to thank God. I want to thank Al Heyman. I want to thank NBC. I want to thank all the fans around the world who came out to support me and watch me on TV. All the fans from Brooklyn, all the fans from Puerto Rico, Brooklyn, Washington, D.C., New York, thank you all. Was this anything like you were expecting it to go tonight. I knew it was going to be a, um, a tough fight. I knew he was going to come. But like I said, like I told him, I said, um, you can't win a big fight running. He came strong at the end, and I was moving a little bit too, but I, I showed I was the champion. I had to go out there and get him. With this majority decision, do you think this was like your first half of the fight, maybe his second half of the fight? Would you agree with that? Yeah, I was talking him down in the beginning. He was moving. He was landing some good jabs, you know, trying to offset me. And then the end, he came strong at me because I think he knew he was losing on points. But it was a hell of a fight, and I'm just thank all the fans came out to support me, and thank all the viewers on NBC and all around the world. The fans wanted to see this fight; they might want to see it again. Yeah, we could do it again. I think we could do it again at 147. All right, Danny, let's go to Marv. All right, Kenny, two entertaining fights tonight. Split draw in the earlier bout, and a majority decision in this one. Our man Steve Farhead was right on at 115-113 for Garcia off those early rounds. Standing ovation, concluding matters in this bout. 23rd coming up now at 11 o'clock Eastern over on NBCSN. 
Our coverage continues with 2012 United States Olympian Errol Spence Jr. putting his 15-0 record on the line against Samuel Vargas, who turns 26 years old at midnight tonight with a record of 21-1. Our first fight, a thrilling draw, if it can be such a thing, between Ireland's Andy Lee and Brooklyn's own Peter Quillen. Quillen knocked Lee down in rounds one and three. Lee knocked Quillen down in round seven. The result, a split draw. We just saw Danny Garcia win by majority decision over Lamont Peterson, built up an early enough lead, held on. He remains undefeated with a record of 30 and 0. For more boxing now, tune in to NBCSN. Errol Spence Jr. taking on Samuel Vargas. Marcus Brown scoring off against Aaron Pryor Jr. Coming up next on NBC, except on the West Coast, your local news later tonight at 11.30 and all news Saturday Night Live with host Taraji P. Henson. Now this is Al Michaels for our entire gang saying good night from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York.